speak again. Please be seated. Six days of work, one day of rest, and time for worship. It seems like you guys know that lesson. <laughs> Here you are this morning, day off, a day in worship. Thanks be to God. On another Sunday, on another Sunday, I think I would want to talk about uh, the spirit versus the letter of the law, or maybe to talk about the radical nature of this 3,000-year-old commandment to keep the Sabbath for rest, for worship, and to talk about how radical it is in that it says that those with property, along with those who serve them, and those who slave every day for them, and even their animals get the same equal necessary treatment and break. That it's God's way of keeping this day holy and that the ground before God is and always has been level and even. But the day calls for a little bit different direction to take. So... As tempting as it is to say, well, you've kept the commandment, now I can send you on your way. You've been true to what the lessons are asking, but not. This being uh, the last Sunday, as Pastor Tom said, that he and I get to lead together, we've been invited to talk about the need for Agnes Day to stay calm, hopeful, trusting, to stay relaxed as the summer schedule and the room changes and the call process, all of that uh, changes over the next few weeks and months. After all, if these lessons are right, you do need to take all your worry and all your anxiety and frustration and hesitation and simply give it a rest, give it a Sabbath day. But to get to that, that'll be the message, but to get to that, I'm going to start us out in, uh, to use a sports metaphor, out in left field. But I think as you're listening to me begin, you're going to think I'm about two blocks outside of the stadium. <laughs> so uh, hang in there as I try to bring that message home, okay? Consider this list regarding our work life. Higher wages, reasonable, reasonable hours, like five days a week, eight hours a day, Overtime pay, safer working conditions, health benefits, retirement benefits, child labor laws, lunch and coffee breaks, overtime pay, equitable salaries, collective bargaining, the right to strike, the right to negotiate, job retaliation and gender bias for, forbidden, and family leave. You got all that? So who do you need to thank for all those benefits? Union leadership, right? Now this, this isn't about unions, but the <laughs> union leadership. All those benefits that we now take for granted, but every one of them have been hard won. It's taken decades and decades to compile that list. And it'll take even more work bring about true family leave and child care like the rest of the industrialized world has? So that's just kind of a truth. But a tricky question for you. Who established the first union benefit for workers? Go. I think I heard it. God, thanks, Laura. I was going to say, think of the first six-day work week, Right? God the creator. Now, it is a left field stretch. I know that. But two of today's lessons make it clear that right from the beginning, God's people deserve a day of rest and recovery, a Sabbath day. And that happens in a world where everybody else has been working uh, sunrise to sunset seven days a week, probably just to survive. So, okay, now we're entering the stadium, right? The priestly writer says that God's work in creation sets a standard of six days of work and a full day of rest to follow because we are not simply beasts of burden. 
not meant to be worked to death. And even the animals who are beasts of burden deserve the same break as we do. Luther wrote this. We observe Sundays and holy days, first of all, because our bodies need the break. People who go about their work or trade all week long need a day to retire and rest in order to be refreshed. And secondly, because we need time and opportunity to assemble and discuss God's word and offer our prayer and our praise and our songs to God, right? Like what you were doing this morning. So right from the start, Right from the start, God looks at us and says, you deserve a break, a day off minimum every week. It's part of biblical history, right? So if the God of the universe and creation is concerned for your well-being and your rest, your bosses should be too, right? In short, Sabbath rest is God-initiated, God-mandated, for everyone. So we're getting, at least in the stadium, right? <laughs> to bring this round third base, the question becomes, how does Sabbath day rest? How does that talk fit with Agnus Day's life apart from Sundays, right? You probably don't need to unionize your pastors and staff. The benefit <laughs> packages are quite nice already, right? But here's what I believe about those two lessons and the Sabbath story and how it speaks to us here today. Sabbath rest, right from the very start of all things, as God reminding us simply that we are not in charge of everything. By giving us a day, a day of rest where we do little to nothing, a Sabbath rest, It teaches that God is still at work while we sit on our hands or sit on our backsides, right? Frederick Buechner writes in Wishful Thinking, think of God resting after the creation was finally all created. Think of the deep hush of it, the hush between breakers on the beach. Think of the new creation itself resting, the gray squirrel ceasing to twitch and chatter, the kingfisher settling down on the branch by the pond, the first man and woman simply standing still in the garden. Just think of God blessing this one day of seven and making it holy. The lesson, I think, once every week, God says to us simply, give it a rest, okay? Trust that not everything depends on you. Trust that you're in good hands. Or as Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew 6, 6, don't worry about your life. Look at the birds of the air who neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? So now home plate. On this day of rest and recovery, it's clear that Agnes Day is in the midst of change, right? Right? Lots of changes these past months, more change to come in the months to come. Pastors changing, leadership changing, room functions changing, right? We're still in the midst of the call process, which will bring even more change. It's been said that the only thing constant in this world is change, yeah. Well, the task is for us to face it and to embrace it, right? So... God set up as one of the very first lessons we needed to learn in this world, simply this, give it a rest, okay? Take your fears, your anxieties, your worries, and give them a rest. At least once a week, take this worry-free break. And when you take that break, remember whose you are and in whose arms you're going to be forever, right? Your rest break comes not from a union, don't worry, but from a communion, right? From belonging to this communion of faith, this community. Remember, you are in this time of change together. You remain in God's good hand and strong embrace. So what's the home run lesson? Four simple words. Give it a rest. Yeah. 
trust in God's care for the life and ministry and people of this congregation. 3,000 years ago, the commandment said, God's got this, and God's got you. Amen.